Okay, I'm going to show you how you can use a table of values to graph in case you ever have a need to do these by hand. Once again, I don't mind if you do use Desmos for all of them, so this video is optional. But for those of you who want to see how to use a table of values, I'm going to show you. The trick is for this, I need a separate table of values for each of these equations. So every equation has its own table of values, and I'm going to try to color code this a little bit. My first one I will do in blue. And I need to look at my domain restrictions when I set up this table. So I'm going to have an X over here. My rule is 2x. I just like, I could write a y there, but I like writing the rule. It helps me evaluate better. And then I need to look at a negative 2. So I'm going to put a negative 2 there as my top line. And always include the endpoint. Always include the number that's included in your domain restriction. Since this is a less than, I need to think of some numbers less than negative 2. So maybe numbers like negative 3 and negative 4. And that one is set up well. Um, before I even worry about evaluating, I'm going to go ahead and do all the domain restrictions. Uh, this next one, I'll do it in purple. And my domain restriction there starts at negative 2. And it stops at positive 2. So I just go from negative 2. I can do negative 1, 0. It probably wouldn't hurt you to skip around and skip over a number or two. As long as you have at least three numbers in there, you'll be okay. But since it was a short list, it didn't hurt to list all five of them. And don't forget to label this as X. And the rule this time is 2. Okay, and then we'll do the last one in green. This one, I have the rule as X and negative 2X. And the numbers I'm going to be plugging in there are a 2 and a 3 and a 4. So a 2, a 3, and a 4. We'll work that. Now, uh, when I go to evaluate, it doesn't really matter which one I evaluate first. I'll just go ahead and work with the green since that's the color I'm using right now. If I have this 2, I'm going to evaluate by putting a 2 where the x is. So literally I would be doing negative 2 times 2 by replacing this x with a uh, with the 2. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. As I continue working my way down, that'll be 3. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Then uh, for the blue, I'm going to uh, plug in the negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, negative 6, and negative 8 familiar y values. For this one, there's no way to plug, nowhere to plug in my x value, so all that happens on the purple is you have the same number all the way down. So 2, 2, no matter what you plug in for x, there was no place to plug it in. Probably different from the tables you've seen before because it's kind of boring, but uh, whatever the x value is, y is 2. Now, notice on these graphs, they aren't set up with a cer in a certain place, so when I go to graph them, I can I put the axis pretty much wherever I want. I'll do the axis in red, I guess. And since I have a lot of negative y values, I'm going to, and not very many positive ones, I'm going to make it be a mostly negative graph. And then there's an even mix of x's, so I'll put the x axis in the middle, but you can set the axis up however you want. Then uh, one other thing to consider is when I go to graph it, the blue one has, to, has a um, less than there. So sometimes people will even put a little open circle to remind them this first point on my graph negative 2, negative 4, over 2, down 4 should be an open circle. And then all the other points are just regular points. You could do them as fat, closed circles, but it makes your graph look a little cluttered. And then you kind of connect the dots in the appropriate shape, and that gives you that. When I go to the purple, it starts with a uh, closed circle because of the equal to. So I would have a closed circle there, and then it's an open circle because the 2 doesn't have an equal to. So I start with a closed circle at negative 2, 2. Nice big closed circle. I just do little small closed circles for my other points. And then a nice open circle on the end. And then connect the dots. And I'm sure you can make your graphs at least as neatly as I can. And on this one, uh, for the last one, I have that uh, green. And I'm going to start with a 2, negative 4. And notice with the equal to, that one is a closed circle. So 2 negative 4 goes there. Then I have the 3, negative 6. And the 4, negative 8. Connect the dots. Draw an arrow to show it keeps going. And that gives you a graph just like the one we had in Desmos using a table of values.